Hi, I'm Danny Ehrlich with Christian Friends of Israeli Communities here in the Jordan River Valley. Uh, I'm standing at a place known as a Gilgal or Gilgal. Gilgal meaning circle or round or wheel. And the reason this is called that, we have it mentioned in the Bible in a number of places, and we're pretty sure there's more than one place called Gilgal because we get them at different ports here uh, in the Jordan River Valley. But behind me, we can see a, a circle of stones that makes almost a processional way. And if you look at the cliff face behind me, I don't know if you can see it, it's almost bleachers. Uh, and we can actually, when we look at it from above, uh, we get a sense of a circular path uh, that people could walk in procession. Other people could be sitting on the cliff face and watching the people in procession. And then at the end, sort of at the, towards the end of one end of the circle here, we have a small stone structure, which you can see behind me, which is an altar. And they find their bones of hundreds and hundreds of animals from thousands of years ago, the time of Joshua, over 3,000 years ago. All the animals, the bones they find are kosher animals. We know this is an Israelite site. And it takes us to an amazing um, uh, chapter uh, in Joshua, chapter 22. And it tells a story. Remember, after the conquest of the land of Canaan, as God promised, two and a half tribes, which are the tribe of Reuben, Gad, and half of Manasseh, are going to return to their homes on the other side, on the eastern bank of the Jordan River. Uh, and they've been promised by Moses. Uh, by God through Moses that, that this is okay, they can do that as long as they join the other tribes in fighting for the land of Israel, fighting for Canaan, which becomes Israel. They do so. And the battles are basically over, and now they're preparing to go home. The other tribes are alarmed. What will this mean if they cross to the other side of the Jordan River? Will we lose contact with them? Will we stop being one people? Will they maybe uh, be enticed into worship of other gods or the other peoples in the area? This tremendous worry. Uh, and we're told uh, in the book of uh, Joshua, in chapter 22, and I'll take you to the uh, verses here. Uh, we have in verse 10, um, when they came to the region of the Jordan in the land of Canaan, right where we are now, the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh built an altar there by the Jordan, a great conspicuous altar. Uh, and the location uh, is called Gililot, like, like, like Gilgal, Gililot. And here we come with archaeology, right down near the Jordan, right down near the crossing of Yabok, where Jacob crossed when he came back into the land and where the tribes would have crossed to get to their holdings on the eastern side of the land. What do we find here? A Gilgal, a round stone area with a massive altar built in the middle from the time of Joshua. Folks, this is just amazing. We talk about the Bible coming to life. This could be like, you know, a guidebook or a newspaper written, and Joshua builds an altar uh, facing the Jordan River. And folks, here we are 3,000 something years later, and here we have it, the altar. Joshua builds the altar, the tribes of Israel build the altar, and this becomes a symbol a symbol of the unity of the tribes of Israel. And here it's amazing, here we are uh, in the year 2020, uh, the reestablishment of the state of Israel, the people of Israel back in their own land, back in their own home. And again, we have this as a symbol that says, we are one, we are united. Uh, we are united under God and we are united here as a people. Now, the various Gilgal locations that we find uh, have a semicircular shape, uh, but the, actually a better way to describe them would actually be the sole of a foot. Uh, a foot. And it's amazing because we have the biblical reference to this as well. Joshua, what is he told by God uh, in the first chapter of Joshua? Kol amakom asher tidroch kaf raglechem, every spot on which your foot treads, I give to you. Uh, and Abraham has promised the same thing. And of course, the festivals that God commands, uh, the, the pilgrim festivals, are in Hebrew, shalosh rigalim, legs. We walk to them. So the processional walking seems to be something very, very important. We have it over and over again uh, in the Bible, in the Tanakh. Uh, and we find it right here in the shape here. 
uh, when you look at this, you can see this is part of a sole of a foot, a heel of a foot, perhaps like a sandal uh, that you might have here. And this isn't the only place where we find this. Uh, so when God says, every place where you will walk, apparently the children of Israel took the verse, just like we're making the Bible come alive. They took those that command from God and they put it into the stone. They said, we're going to create a Kaf Regel, a imprint of our foot. So we can say we are walking here in the land. We are walking in the footsteps that God is us. We're walking in the footsteps of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob coming here to the land. And this is one of those places where it seems clear to us that the tribes of Israel did so over 3,000 years ago. Hi, this is Sandra Osterbaris from Christian Friends of Israeli Communities, and we're here in the community of Argaman. Argaman is located right near, it's the closest community to that amazing Gilgal site, the site that's the, that has the shape of the footprint. So we know that this is one of the early areas of settlement when Joshua brought the children of Israel into the land. Well, if we fast forward and we go back to 1969, this is the second Jewish community that is established here in this area in Jordan Valley right after the Six Day War. The first community just to the north of us is Mechola, and this is Argaman, the second community to be established. Today there are 40 families living in Argaman. And it was actually at the beginning, all these young people came and they were very pioneering and they withstood all these terrible hardships, especially of the weather. And they built a lovely community with agriculture, hot houses, uh, date palms, all sorts of things. They raised their children, their children grew up and moved away. And the community was very concerned because they were starting to die. You know, the kids move away. Who's going to come in? Who's going to be the next generation? And then gradually over the years, as their children got married, many of them decided to return to the community where they had grown up and raise their children here. Now, Christian Friends of Israeli Communities, we have been involved with Argaman for a long time, helping them in all sorts of things. And one of our most recent projects was really something that to me represents this connection between the older pioneering generation and the new generation. The seniors of this community got together with the children and they did this whole arts and crafts project to beautify the entrance to the community. And so this is something that we help buy the supplies for and they did this and they made it really beautiful. And we'll also see the sign that they put up, a brand new sign that says in Hebrew, the name Argaman. One of the things we also were involved with also here at the entrance to the community was the security guard post, making it a much more comfortable and much more effective place for the security to be run out of here in Argaman. Love to bring you and visit here on your own when you next come to Israel. Have a wonderful day and see you soon. I hope you enjoyed that video and we'd like to be sure you're getting all of our video content so just click on the subscribe button below as well as on the notification bell and that way you will have easy access to all our material. We look forward to staying in touch with you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.